playing around, around some weather this afternoon here in Midtown Atlanta as the number five team in the country, the Clemson Tigers, come in and try and sweep Georgia Tech here this Sunday afternoon from Newborn Field. Nathan McCreary and Sam Paranunzi calling this one for you as Sam, Clemson came in the number one team in the ACC in home runs and they have continued to hit the ball all weekend long and something Georgia Tech's got to kind of have to find a way and to find a solution for because Valerie Cagle and her team has come in here hitting the ball extremely well on the first night. Cagle's the one who got it started. This is a team that just hits so, so well. Yeah, home run derby, hitting clinic, dinger show, whatever you want to call it. The Clemson Tigers are hot. Their offense able to not only hit balls that are left over the plate from the Georgia Tech bullpen, but balls that are two and three balls off the plate, low in the zone, able to go down and get these pitchers pitches and drive them out of the yard. And this is the kind of offensive show that's going to take them deep, deep into postseason. That's why they're ranked number five, Nathan. You saw seven home runs, five different players have hit home runs and multiple home runs yesterday for Caroline Jacobson and this Clemson Tiger starting lineup. Mackenzie Clark at the, at the top of this order, always a dangerous player to get on base. Cagle, Moore and Cagle actually have home runs. Logaleo as well. This is just one through nine, an extremely good hitting team. And the Jackets haven't figured it out yet how to get keep them off the base paths. They haven't figured out how to keep them off the base paths, but they have put together a pretty impressive fight. Uh, you know, scoring Agreed. more runs than any other opponent that Clemson has faced. Hit a home run yesterday off the bat of Sarah Beth Allen. That's the, only the second home run that the Clemson bullpen has given up. Um, and I think, you know, for Georgia Tech coming into this game, they were maybe not well positioned to walk away with a series win or even maybe even a win. But there were some good things that happened in both games one and two that that make up for a promising second half of ACC play for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, it was a 9-1 five inning run rule game on Friday. Yep. You'll love the fight the Jackets brought yep. on Saturday. It was and it was a it was a six to four game in the last inning. Clemson did score some runs late to pad that lead, but yep. much better hitting. You did leave four runners on base, and that's an area yep. I think the Jackets need clutch hitting, getting runners on, and getting them in is and huge. And getting them in. When you have runners in you know, second and third with two outs, you got to be able to come up with a big hit. Um, another big thing that comes to mind from, from yesterday's game in particular is some of the miscues off the gloves of Clemson defenders. These are uncharacteristic. This is one of the best defensive squads in the country and certainly in the ACC. Um, and while only one error was recorded in the scorebook, there were several balls deflected off of gloves in situations that you might not necessarily expect from, you know, from the old orange and purple yeah. down there on, on, the, on the flats. Well, so. the, ja the Jackets will turn to sophomore Sophia Voyles has had pitched a lot this weekend. Yeah. Um, she, last night, four and a third, Gave up three hits, three runs. She pitched on Friday also, went an inning. Um, they're turning to her because Blake Nelman hasn't been effective. Um, see what Sophia uh, Voyles is able to do. I likely see a couple of arms here for the Jackets here Sunday. Yeah, it'll be another pitch by committee type of a situation. Yesterday when, when interviewed, Morales talked about the pitch by committee approach. Uh, that's going to be super important because of the change in speeds and the change in looks. The reason that Voyles has been successful against the Tigers' offense uh, is because she's able to mix her change. She throws at a, a lower velocity than the other pitchers in the bullpen, and that allows her to focus on her spin. Um, and that's why she's issuing a lot of swings and misses. Mm -hmm. That's not something that's typical for Clemson. Um, and, and, you know, starting right off the bat, Mackenzie Clark. Mackenzie Clark struck out twice yesterday. That's not typical for her. She's not the kind of hitter that's going to go down on strikes. She's going to go down by putting the ball in play if she goes down at all. So um, just, you know, like we've mentioned, to summarize, there's been a lot of really positive things from both squads. And, you know, you're watching the number five team in the country. Yeah. So you can expect some good softball, some good offense, good defense, good pitching. Voyles did strike out three yesterday, and she faces Mackenzie Clark here to lead things off. Weren't sure we're going to get this one in. This one, it was raining and rain in the forecast. Hopefully it's behind us and we can get this game in fully as the first pitch is just inside for ball one. Yeah, I went for a walk with my mom this morning drinking coffee, and we got caught in the rain. And oh, I, gosh. I was like, I don't, I don't know that, that Tech's going to play today. 
They've done a great job. The field looks perfect as usual. Next pitch fouled off. One ball, one strike to Clark. Yeah, the only place where weather might be a factor would be ground balls to the outfield. So you'll want to keep an eye on that anytime the ball reaches the grass. Still a lot of moisture out there. That's when you might boot balls. You might see ground balls skip with a little bit more hop on them. And that one's grounded off. 0 for 3 yesterday was Clark. It doesn't happen very no. often. Yeah, yeah, and I tell you, you get, keep her, keeping her off the mm -hmm. base paths is an essential, I think, if you're going to pick up a win against this Clemson team. Coming in 31-1, and 8-0 and now in the conference. The Jackets 16-14, and 2-6 and in the conference. And here's the one-two pitch to Clark. And she chases it. Strike out for Sophia Voiles. Yeah, and that's Clark's 20th strikeout on the season. See how she just works away here, takes the spin, locates it off that outside corner, and then, of course, with two strikes, she's able to chess piece that just off even further and further. It gets the chase from Clark. That's beautiful. Here's Maddie Moore standing in, the sophomore, 0 for 4 yesterday, but 3.03 on the season. Good start to this. Getting ahead of hitters is another area we Huge. talked about last week against Virginia Tech, um, how important that was. Kind of into this weekend as well. Get ahead of those hitters, limit your walks. Yeah, because it, it does two things, right? One, you don't have to throw as many pitches per inning, so you have more stamina. Mm -hmm. You have more control of your pitches because you have more juice in the tank. And then two, you're able to play with your count and use pitches that will tee up others. So, you know, kind of, and we talked about this on Friday, kind of like in the game of chess, it's, it's a lot easier to be able to get an opponent's chess piece by using two or three moves. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have any moves and you're backed in a corner, that can be really hard to beat somebody with. That one's in the dirt. So it'll be one ball, two strikes to Moore. Clemson sitting top of the ACC standings. Jackets about midway down. Moore had a two for three night on Friday with a home run. So she's a dangerous hitter, one, two. Here we go. Two and two. One thing that Boyles does well, and, or at least has been doing well in this series especially, is keeping her change up nice and low. Hitters like the Tigers offense are able to, to time up that change up and still drive it long even though that doesn't have as much power love how she goes up and out to set up that low and in pitch and remember she started out on that inner half of the plate so Moore was not swinging on that inner half of the plate strike and then she goes right back to that same spot it's beautiful yeah Moore takes a seat don't think she likes the call no doesn't matter but here comes Valerie Cagle with two outs Kegel 484 on the season. I mean, crazy. One for three yesterday. Two for two on Friday. Had herself quite the day on Friday. Yep. Two home runs, two RBIs, went four innings, two hits, one run, nine strikeouts. <laughs> She's had home runs in both the games so far, and she's ahead of the count 2 0 here. We see she was struggling a little bit in the ACC. Did not have a good weekend last weekend against Virginia. She's played get right here at Mewbourne Field. I should say so. 3 0. As a former player, what do you see from her that just stands out? I mean, is it just, I mean, you look at the stats, but how she plays, the way she carries herself, just. She She's got quiet confidence. Okay. Quiet confidence is the scariest kind of player because, <laughs> one, you never know what they're thinking, and that means you never know if they're up and you never know if they're down. Right. Um, but, two, quiet confidence is 
the kind of sting that hurts because it's like, you know, if somebody comes up real fiery, real confident, you see Jacobson stepping into the box uh, with two outs. Quiet confidence, takes a big hack on a swing. You, you just don't expect it, right. so it almost catches you off guard. So when you scout this team and you see this player who's got all these impressive stats and then she comes out on the field and kind of acts like, you know, I got this, yeah. cool, calm, collected. It's like harder, it's kind of like poker. It's harder to call her number. It's yeah. harder to pick out her weakness, poke holes in her, because you don't ever know when you're getting to her. You mentioned Jacobson batting, had two home runs yesterday. This is the problem for the Jackets. You walk Cagle, you got two outs, but it just doesn't get any easier that's, batter after batter after batter. That's fair. That's fair. If you're going to issue a walk, if you're going to give up a free pass, give it to Cagle because you can't go wrong. Right. I think um, very rarely will that lead you down a bad path. But to your point... That, then you have to come back and at least keep something in, in the fence, yes. in the yard. That one's up, falling behind Jacobson, 2-1 here. Boyle's going to take a extended walk. See the jackets in the camouflage. It is Military Appreciation Day. We'll talk more about their uniform and the special aspects of it a little later on. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Kept the ball up against Jacobson. That one too far in. 3-1. Logaleo waits on deck. There are two outs in the inning. Here's a 3-1. Dangerous pitch. And she got every bit of it. Two-run shot for Jacobson. This is a huge, huge swing from Jacobson, who looked at balls out of the zone, up and in, and waited for Boyles to bring it back into the plate. Notice this was the same exact pitch that just rung up more two batters ago, is that up and in pitch. This one left over the plate just a little bit more, but love to see the discipline and looking for this 3-1 pitch, looking for this hitter's count, right. and just absolutely smoking one on out there to left center. Understanding the situation and then executing a perfect swing on a pitch over the plate. And here is Logaleo. 2 nothing lead, Clemson. There's a strike. Eighth home run here in this series. I tell you, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech last week, Clemson this week, Florida State next week. <laughs> and then Duke right around the Duke, corner. Yes, it's uh, it's tough. It's, it's like... <laughs> you feel for them a little you bit. For, yeah, you, you want them to come up for air and, and have, a, have a game. Right. You know. Well, it, it, these are opportunities. And that's the thing, this, I mean, not to get too sentimental here, but this is a really good learning lesson for life is like, these are opportunities to practice, get better and learn. And the team that shows up and fights every single pitch, tried to make the most of every situation. Logaleo is gonna swing and miss. That's gonna make them successful later in season. And, and these are moments, these are moments that'll contribute to that. Well, tip of the cap, three strikeouts. <laughs> In the inning for Boyles, but a walk and a Jacobson bomb. Puts Clemson Tigers up 2-0 as we head to the bottom of the first. And the Jackets coming up. Valerie Cagle is going to be in the circle for Clemson. And on Friday, she had nine strikeouts against the Jackets. Four innings pitch. It was a run rule game. She actually didn't get the complete game, but just impressive. I mean, coming out, doing both, yeah. hitting and pitching. And coming off of battling through an injury last season to absolutely shutting down offenses. Her off speed, she's got, you'll see the note there at the bottom. She throws high velocity. Mm -hmm. One of the highest velocity pitchers in the ACC, no doubt. And her off speed is a rise ball, which I think is pretty cool. You don't see that often. She's facing Emma Kalf here. His a one for six weekend. Did not have a hit yesterday. Had a double on Friday. And boy, if you want something, 
Go ahead and start it earlier if you're the Jackets. You're down two runs. See the starting lineup here for the Jackets. Kauf, Mallory Black, Conley. Allen had the home run yesterday. Huge. Dobbins has been hitting the ball well. Well, and the Jackets ended up at one point tying the game up four and four. Mm -hmm. And again, that's the most runs that Clemson has given up to an opponent. One ball, two strikes, falls outside the zone, two and two. Chopper Moore scoops and flips to first for out number one. We talk about defenses. These are the two top ACC defenses, and they're pretty much the top ten in the nation. You're not going to get many ground no. balls that aren't going to get gobbled up. No, and, and, and that's important because not only are they going to make – the table stakes plays, the routine plays, but they're also going to make the spectacular plays, and they're going to make them look easy. And Edgman had one yesterday yep. for Georgia Tech that was phenomenal. Edgman had one yesterday. McLeish had one yesterday out in left field to shut down the, the Jackets late in the game, back. finish up the game. Back-to-back -back strikes on either side of the plate for Black, down 0-2. Black 275 on the season, the junior. Almost kind of a check swing, easy to Logaleo. And there's two jackets down. She's moved around probably the most. Not, not the most, but we've in seen her in, in a lot of different spots or take di different jumps. It's been interesting and, to watch her a, being used in a lot of different capacities. A lot of different lineups. Yeah. In, a, in Mingany is in the lineup today as a designated player, left-handed bat. Yep. See how that, that works out as Conley steps in and takes a ball. Yeah, I mean, that's a smart move. Mingeni, Saleo, Edgman, all three down at the bottom, seven, eight, and nine, have a lefty slapper, triple threat style uh, hitting style. And especially with Kegel, who throws a lot of drop balls, uh, so long as the dirt isn't too soft from yeah. all the rain, that, that mixes well, that bodes well for you. Uh, lefty slappers and drop ball pitchers com uh, go to complement each other nicely. Another ground ball, Moore on to first. So three ground outs for the Jackets. Now that'll do it here for the first inning. Clemson Tigers up to nothing. The only coach that Clemson has ever known is John Rittman. Started this program, developed it, and has just done a phenomenal job of course part of that u.s national team came from stanford where he had a wonderful career as the head coach on the west coast now he's doing it on the east coast and you know when you have that much experience working with some of the most talented players the most winningest players that have experience managing success and managing success consistently uh, i'm sure he is just a plethora of knowledge right when it comes to developing mm -hmm. a young and up-and-coming successful player. And you can see that. His team is a product of that. They validate all of that experience that he has. Here's Vieira, the catcher. Abby Vieira out of Mission Vejo, California. Going to foul one off. Evens a count, one ball, one strike. Beer is a sophomore, 3.23 on the season. If I'm not mistaken, she is going to have a face hit. <laughs> I was thinking she may have had a double on Friday. I have to go back and look. She's got a single here to start off the second. Yep. I don't see a double delivered. in my book, but I sure do see a single in my book for her today. Yeah, she walked and struck out on Friday. But she's definitely on base here. And another Tiger runner and a pinch runner is going to be Baumart, the senior.
See, 15 attempts for stealing, 13 of them successful. So certainly a speed threat. We saw her enter the game yesterday. Has the most attempts and successful steals on the Clemson team. Here is Oda. Ariel Oda, junior, out of Buford, Georgia. Yep. Her and JoJo Hyatt played together at Buford. Bats here, nobody out, runner at first. Off the plate, Kauf tries to frame it up. Bombert taking a healthy lead over there at first. It's tough, especially as a catcher in this situation, because Kauf needs to be focused completely on framing every single pitch, trying to help Voiles out as much as possible, but then also be aware of the steal threat, and you'll get a fly out to left. So that'll mitigate the steal risk for at least one batter. Yep, fly out to Kauf. Runner stays at first base, so one out. Now you got Miklish. She'll stand in, the eight-hole hitter, the senior, 367. We mentioned she had a big catch yesterday, made its way onto the NCAA softball Instagram. Throw down to second base is going to be snared by Saleo to prevent it from going in the outfield, but it's a stolen base for Baumart. This is a great lead. It's going to be a bang-bang play regardless. I don't know if even if the throw is on the target because look at that lead. And you just have to say thank goodness for the athleticism in Saleo. She was able yeah. to go up and get that ball. McLeish transfer from uh, Wisconsin is going to swing and miss. She earned second team all Big Ten honors as a Badger. She led the team with 11 stolen bases, so you want to keep her off the base paths as well. Yep, she's a big, big bunt threat, big steal threat. Here she squares the bunt, will take a strike, so one ball, two strikes to Mecklish. And watching games in preparation for these and just keeping up with the Tigers because they are so phenomenal. One thing that I did notice about Miklish is that she's not a huge fan of inside pitches, which mm. is pretty typical for lefty, lefty slapper style hitters. Swings at one across the letters. Fourth strikeout for Voyles. This is a beautiful pitch from Voyles. You'll see this one thrown high. It's like either a rise ball or a curve that she got kind of underneath, which is a great, great approach for a pitcher facing a lefty batter. You want to try to get the ball to climb in and up on their hands. She's matched her season high in strikeouts already as Voiles had four against Charlotte. I mean, she's really turned it on. And, and you needed her to. You Reedy needed Davenport her Davenport steps in, yeah. If you're the Jackets, you have to have an arm that comes, th that's going to be in the circle and be effective. Mm -hmm. She usually comes in in closing situations, so it's it's really fun to see her get the start. Yeah, I've been impressed with her and Kenzie Norton. Yep. You know, doing, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you come, when you come in in a relief situation where your starter has gotten hit out of the game, it's a much different mindset. Sure. There's there's not maybe as much pressure because your job isn't to beat the other team. Your job is to try to come in and just mm -hmm. minimize the damage. So there's maybe a little less pressure there. But 3 and 0 to Davenport. She settled into this start pretty well. She has, you know, of course she's given up the long ball. That's that's going to be something that happens against Clemson folks. So that shouldn't come as a surprise. It's more about the response, right? She's kept them quiet in the second inning. Coach Marty McDaniel is going to make your first appearance out of the Georgia Tech dugout. Talk to Voyles. And because the ACC is a conference that is full of good hitters, you have to have one or two good arms and then a, you know, people you can trust out of the bullpen. 
And Cagle for Clemson, Limley for Virginia Tech. Yep. Nelman is that pitcher for Georgia Tech. Do you worry about because these teams have come in and hit her well, her mindset? Because she is your your Friday night starter, essentially. Yeah, and, and Dennis, too, for that matter, Dennis, right? Because right. especially we saw last season, those two would be used mm -hmm. interchangeably in that ace spot. Ball four as Davenport will walk, and you've got to face the top of the order here for Clemson. Yeah, this is a really, really tough pitch from Voyles. you got the meeting from Coach McDaniels. You would love to see her after the pitching coach comes out. But um, one, th one thing that I heard yesterday from the talent that called the game was um, a phenomenal hitter from, from Jenny who played for Arizona, was one of the best hitters at Arizona in her time. She said the best pitch was the one after the pitching coach meeting. Mackenzie Clark's going to pop it up. Saleo goes back and will close the mid on it for the final out. So one hit, no runs, a stolen base. But we'll stay right there. 2-0, Clemson leads the Jackets. If you come to the ballpark, you got to find Buzz. Always happy to take pictures with the fans. And lots of youth come to these games. Of course, Sunday is a game you get to run the bases if it's not raining too badly. <laughs> but Buzz does a good job as Ali Morales. Take a look at her. They're in the dugout wearing her military uh, sweatshirt. She's a military brat, as they call them, and uh, appreciates the service. She calls herself that, too, by the way. Good. So Nathan's allowed to say that. Good. I hesitantly said it because uh, I could tell, I could send you. <laughs> well, she said it. She interviewed with the D1 podcast on the onset of the season, and she she very fondly referred to herself as. Good. Most of us who were military, and I was military brat, served in the military. It yeah. It, that's what you. That's yeah. what you are. That's what you are. Yeah. And I was a total brat as a kid, so it fit <laughs> <laughs> perfectly. As not Alan's like her. Answer. You. I, I was. Could, that I, totally yeah. checks out. Yep. Allen had a home run yesterday. A big one. And over the scoreboard one. Yeah. Two for three. Day for her. And she's in a defensive role as well. Out in right field. Out in right field. That one's in the dirt. 2-2. Two, two. Hey, you know, if you're hitting, you're in the lineup. And Got to find a way. Yeah, and, and putting her in the outfield opens up the DP spot for somebody else who they can play around with some. There's mm -hmm. not as much substitution and changing of the defense. She'll go down swinging, chasing one outside the zone. It's a good pitch. Huge pitch from Cagle. I mean, just pepper in that bottom half of the zone. And the Jackets, the first inning, were rolling over, and you see now Allen chasing this one, not able to even barrel that one up. That actually was a better pitch from that angle than I thought it was. Yeah. That was a really tough pitch. Yeah. No, she does that. Yeah. Here's Dobbins. Going to ground that one foul. I can't believe she doesn't have Air Force on her back. There's an Air Force base here called Dobbins. <laughs> someone, someone wasn't thinking through <laughs> that. Maybe her, maybe her dad was in the was in the army, or maybe yeah, a family member. That's or certainly was in the true. Army. That's certainly true. Oh one, and there for a strike. That was a good looking pitch as, as well. Someone who didn't play softball, and I look at well, that's a pitch right down the middle. How difficult is it? It was not just down the middle. It was all it's kind of movement up. velocity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Change-ups are tough. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times as a hitter, when you face a velocity pitcher, you make the choice going into your at-bat that you're not swinging at an off-speed pitch unless it's two strikes. So it doesn't matter how good it looks. If I want to be on time for the hard stuff, uh, I'm letting that change-up go. She does wait on that one and fouls it off. So one ball, two strikes to Dobbins. 364 on the season. And that might be an approach that hitters take, especially against Kegel, because if you're not hit swinging at off speed, you're not swinging at her changeup or that off speed rise ball. And that helps you be able to detect that with your eye mm -hmm. and then not pull the trigger on that. Staying alive, 1 2. Dobbins tops on the team in batting average. Let's that one roll inside. Dobbins is another one who's come in and just surprised us all. 
She's had some good weekends. An yeah. amazing job. Chopper is going to be foul. Nice play by Morales. <laughs> we get to see some of those All-American hands. Hall of Famer hands. Yeah. You know she loves that. Oh, yeah. she's Look, she's trying not to smile because <laughs> I'm sure they're probably just yeah. cutting up over there. Another one. She gets to, and she didn't want to show off. Yeah, I mean. You, Got to you know. be cool. Gotta, that's, right. her, that's her whole MO is got to be cool. So do it again. Two balls, two strikes to Dobbins. She's a 2005 ACC Freshman of the Year. Yep. Had a great career here on the flats. And any, any player that earns All-American honors is a great player. There's an off-speed pitch, and she laid off that one. It yeah, was high and out. High he and hasn't outside. really been calling that outside corner to either side, so to lefties or to righties. So three balls, two strikes to Dobbins. And she gets one down the plate, down the middle, and goes off the wall. Going to have to stay at first base. However, played well. Kind of hit off the base of the wall. Smart base running. Clark is a very seasoned outfielder. Able to read this off the wall and get it quickly into second base. A good decision by Dobbins, even though it goes off the palm of Moore from second receiving the throw. But this was a great at bat from Dobbins. Felled off several pitches and then waited until there was one that was up in the zone enough. And again, this is the importance of picking, picking a pitch because mm -hmm. of the speed of the pitch so that that way you're able to get your timing, get your timing with each foul ball. You're not mixing your timing trying to hit that change up. So she was able to use the foul balls to help her get on time, get information, get data about what it looks like out of her hand. And then finally one is in the zone enough that she Hughes has been hitting the ball well. Yeah, she cheap. got a hit yep. yesterday. And had a big day Tuesday uh, against Troy. Stands in. One out, runner at first. Talked about jackets on the bases. Got to find a way to advance the runner. One and two. Sun is peeking through. And just for the benefit of the listener at home, the Tigers have played 32 games, and Cagle has given up 54 hits. So she gives up two. That ball's just blooped in perfect place. Moore able to glove it. Yeah, and good drop step, good first step from Moore. This is not a, an easy catch because she's reaching across her body to her backhand side, and time's up. See how she jumps up just enough? The timing of this jump is huge because any earlier, that would have gone over her glove. Mm. She would not have been able to get to that, so that's big time. Here's Mingini, and didn't mean to, third. Davenport will fire on the first, so runner left on for the Jackets. After the single by Dobbins, nothing doing. Cal Cagle holds him right there. Clemson up 2-0. Back here on Military Appreciation Day here at Georgia Tech. Clemson up 2-0 in special uniforms for the Jackets honoring military and the ROTC patch is in honor of Tyler Brown. Tyler Brown was killed in the line of duty uh, in Iraq. September 14th, 2004, he was a member of Georgia Tech's ROTC. They honor him here this afternoon with a gold star on their sleeve. And a very emotional video Eileen Morales and the Georgia Tech put out on their social media just talking about military and the importance of, of, of respecting those who serve their country um, and give the ultimate sacrifice um, during wartime. It's just uh, it's a touching tribute to them, and, and uh, certainly me as a military brat and someone who served the military, I appreciate it. Yeah. I know you do, too, you do as well. I mean, absolutely. When you have a coach like that who leads a program and instills a so much bigger than myself type of mentality into her players, you, you have this hunger to make the world a better place. And so while, you know, these girls might not go on and necessarily serve their country in that mm -hmm. capacity, they develop the respect that it takes to make sacrifices 
and and they develop like i said that hunger to to do good and put good into the world and that's that's what coaching is all about here's more taking a pitch inside now two and one and when the uniform looks cool <laughs> that doesn't a, suck either yeah that's a pretty good <laughs> thing as well yeah those are some pretty sick unis more struck out looking back in the second didn't like the call that was inside and she's going to send one looks like it may go off the wall just before one hop edgeman close play at second because we get past conley but give more a double yeah she smoked this one gonna put a good swing on a good pitch wow yeah I mean, she times this up. She's just like the tiniest bit out in front, but that works for her because she took a ball that was middle out and drove it to left center field. So you got to be a little bit out in front to be able to take it to that location. And that, that works for her. I mean, that, that looks well with her swing. That, that looks well where she gets to contact. She's able to produce a lot of power there. First base is open with Valerie Cagle coming up. They've walked her once already. See how they play it here. She did come home to score. You see her sporting 484, 10 home runs. This is a special player. And oh, if, yeah. if you get a chance to watch a lot of softball, special players, she's going to get a <laughs> swing on one and <laughs> hit it a long way, but foul. Uh, yeah. You appreciate this. Oh, I appreciate yeah. being able to watch her this entire weekend. Well, you know, she's coming from Clemson, which is a brand new program. She established this program she is yep. say, setting the bar and i mean the bar is couldn't be higher folks uh you know you think of programs like oklahoma who is just historically yep. so so successful they're gonna have a lot of notable players they're gonna have a lot, have a lot of household names UCLA. people that you recognize mm -hmm. um but in kegel she's starting this program from the ground up mm -hmm. so she doesn't have the benefit of the program history and the lessons learned that are coming from the players that came before you that have won national titles. Yeah, right. She still has one season left. She's a junior. Go ahead and she'll, start, start. she'll compete. Yeah. She will 100% compete for a national title. And if you don't think she will, I mean, she's giving up less than two hits a game and she's every other at bat getting a hit. So I, I think she'll absolutely compete for a national deep into the championship series in Oklahoma City. 1-2. I like the Jackets are going after her here with first base open. She's going to foul it off. And, I mean, she's not shy about swinging at that pitch with two strikes, even with Boyles having an off speed. These are not hesitant swings or defensive swings that she's putting on a 1-2 count. She stayed outside on Kegel most of this at bat, and she's going to get her chase there. Wow. Swung on and missed by Cagle. <laughs> All right, Boyles. Yeah, there you go. I that mean, is I have the 12th strikeout of the season for Cagle, and it just dropped right out of yeah, off of her bat. Yeah, that changeup, and that, that, that's how that changeup being low was what helped her be successful, being able to have the discipline to be able to keep it low because if that had been even up enough to be a called strike, Cagle would have sent that out of the yard. And that may be all she wrote for Voiles. What a way to go. Two and a third, three hits, two runs, and five strikeouts for Voiles. Got a new pitcher coming in. We'll let you know about Chandler Dennis. We return. The senior from Swanee, Georgia, and transfer from Michigan, Chandler Dennis, will be in the circle after that huge strikeout by Sophia Voiles. And Dennis comes in. She's got a 10 and 4 record, 3.18 ERA. Last pitched yesterday, went two right innings. Fielder, 10, Interesting time move, timeliness of this move, but mm, you got. Yeah. I think Jacobson went yard multiple yeah. times in this series. So you, I, I agree with the timing, especially allowing Voiles, who is a young pitcher, to walk away from this appearance with five strikeouts and striking out Valerie Cagle. I mean, 
you want to talk about a confidence builder. And again, the timing of Jacobson is important. Uh, she didn't do a whole lot in game one. Walked, got on, reached as a result of an error and struck out, but had a heck of a game yesterday. She did. 2-0 count. You got to have uh, your pitcher come in and start throwing strikes, though. You've got one out in the inning, runner at second base. We've talked about Nelman and Chandler Dennis walking too many batters. Foul back. And you, you've harped on trust your trust your defense. Get yeah. a ground ball, you know. Yeah, and keep it low enough in low. the zone, too. Um, because if, even if you're throwing rise balls, which happens sometimes, or you're throwing a curve that you kind of get under a little bit so that it has that rise and curve effect, um, you know, locate those to the outer portion of the plate, inner portion of the plate. I mean, mixing speeds is huge. I'm super impressed with how Dennis has battled back to even up the count. It's a great pitch. <laughs> um, yeah, getting, you, you know, you expect a hitter like Jacobson to swing with the 2-0 count, so it's big that she was able to get a foul. She's gonna turn on one, sends a foul. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because th those foul balls that are really deep, but really, really far pull side, to me, I mean your timing's messed up. I mean they seem impressive because they're really big and long and they seem like big home run hits, but you're way out in front. Here's the two two. Comes in, they're gonna say it hit her. I don't Jacobson acted like it didn't hit her. Yeah, I think she wanted to hit, to be honest with you. So she'll and go I down to first. I don't blame her with the swing that she has. So runners at first and second, and one out. And Logaleo will be standing in. You know, that might not be the worst outcome. Jacobson already mm -hmm. hit a home run here today. Had one yesterday. You know. Yes, Logaleo had a home run on Friday. Struck out to end the first. Bats here with runners at first and second, and only one out. Then his first pitch high. She has 41 walks in 72 innings, does Dennis. Here's a fun fact about Logaleo. Played softball, volleyball, and basketball in high school and was a, a team captain. That's quite an athletic resume. Team captain for all of those teams. <laughs> so she's demonstrated leadership yeah. and quite the athlete. No wonder she's got such smooth hands at shortstop. She's got a 2-0 count here. Got to be careful if you're tech. And is it going to get out? It will. <laughs> Three-run home run by Logaleo has opened this game up. Talk about a swing. Talk about an adjustment. You see her greeting her teammates at, at home plate with a huge grin on her face and much deserved. Looks for this one low and out. Hang, it's hanging up in the strike zone enough that a low pitch can still be taken out and clears the fence by several feet. That'll do it. That's all it takes. So one run belongs to Voyles. The other two to Dennis. You can close the book on Sophia as Vieira will stand in. Still one out in the inning, three runs across on the home run by Logaleo. You know, I think the thing that hurts the most about that, if you're tech, is the hit by pitch. Ah, uh, yeah, right. As Blake Nelman will start warming. Sharply fouled. It's an interesting mindset to take because there's a, you know, approach in softball where if you're within four runs, mm -hmm. you're within 
technically one swing. You yeah. have to have the bases loaded, of course, but you're still within one Ground swing. Ball. Hughes will take it unassisted. But that only applies when you're facing a team where it's realistic to think that you can put up four runs, right? Because the Jackets did that against Clemson. That's the first time that they've given up four runs. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's why... That, that's why you look at that hit by pitch and you think that that hurts because that's what bumps it up out of what's realistic or reasonable to expect the Jackets to be able to produce from an authentic, offensive perspective. Here's Oda. Jumps on the first pitch and swings and misses. 0-1. Oh, Oda flied out back in the second inning. Dark clouds looming around. But check the radar. It looks like we're good for the next hour or so. See there in the beautiful skyline. 65 degrees. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Again, fouled off 1-2. So Dennis, ahead in the count here, one, two, to Oda. Two outs in the inning, here's the pitch. Oh, close. Nicely located with two strikes. Don't want to give up any more big hits, so try to locate it just one or two balls off the plate. Try to use your spin to make it look good enough to get that chase, so it's not a bad pitch. Ground ball. Hughes bobbles it a bit, but he'll step on it for out number three. But a double by Moore. Jacobson was hit by a pitch, and then Logaleo launches one to center field. It's a three-run home run and a five-run game. Tigers lead. Logaleo and her teammates celebrating. She had the big three-run shot. At the top of the inning. And Kegel will be back in the circle. And the bottom of the order coming up, Saleo Edgman, and then flip it to Kalf. Here in the bottom of the third. I think we're we're in for an all-out brawl here from the bottom of this lineup, Nathan. If we if we expect the Yellow Jackets to keep a heartbeat in there. It was Lineup. middle and the bottom of their order yesterday that kind of got them started. Indeed. So, you know, it's not it's not that far out of the question. And you need, you know, it's it's just one step at a time. Sure. Get a base runner. Sure. Get them over. Find a way to get them over. Sure. And eventually, we you you made the, or you had agreed. I had heard. Hitting is contagious. Mm -hmm. Just do something good, and that can be contagious. There's a. Bunt that's missed on 0-1. I think bunting is a great, great option. Would be a great solution to a relatively quiet day offensively for the Jackets. Yep, just one hit, and that was Dobbins. Last inning, it was a a laser beam. She Smoked had a good, at, a great at bat versus Cagle. She really just put it in her green egg and smoked it. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Not hashtag, not an ad. Two and one. I don't have any brand deals that I could brag about here. So I don't have a green egg. So. Well, I don't either. <laughs> I don't. Let's be. I don't know what I'm talking about yeah. half the time. Oh, okay. I'm on this mic. So two one. Let's get that Swing out of the way miss. early. Way behind that fastball. Two two. Slayo leads the team in stolen bases. And Edgman waits on deck. Got a piece of it. Mm -hmm. That's what makes getting that bunt down so important. She has the speed. And especially with May back over there at first base, mm -hmm. the way that they play Saleo in a power slap defensive shift, they'll bring in with less than two strikes, they'll bring in Davenport at third, but they'll leave that big gap open up the first base line. You saw that she had that, that idea. She even had the drop ball that was in 
So she even had the pitch to get that bunt down the first baseline. Right. And unfortunately, if you're going to show bunt, put in the, the heads of the defenders that that's what your plan is, and then you don't get it down, you also wasted a strike against a pitcher like Cagle. And a swing and a miss, the pitch tailing outside away from Saleo. Second strikeout for Cagle. So, you know, that makes it even more important. And then you see her able to go down and away. And this is just, you know, drop ball or two seam that's just located really nicely on that outer portion of the plate. You see, it doesn't spin right and left a whole lot. It's mm -hmm. just dropping. It's just got tons of top spin. So it just drops off the table. Here's Edgman. One for two yesterday with an RBI. And a heck of a play in the outfield. A huge, huge play in the outfield. We've seen a couple of those across the grass from both sides. Yes, absolutely. 1-1. One, one. Not going to get the call on that one. Two balls, one strike. I was an outfielder back in my time. We, we fondly referred to ourselves as the grass patrol. Mm, oh, okay. So that's, that's the mindset. We're patrol. They're, not a thing is going to drop in this grass. Grass patrol. Grass Do you have patrol. t-shirts made? Badges? No, but we had like a whole handshake <laughs> and everything. Oh. I might make a jacket now that I think about it. Yeah. Once you're in, you're in. Anyways. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Sharply grounded. Moore on to first. Moore just making it look as easy as could be. Able to field this off that third hop. It's got a lot of spice on it because Edgeman struck it well. Yeah. And it was a change up, so it already had a lot of funny spin on it. And then has a really nice kind of a sidearm toss over to one. Here's Emma Kalf. 0 for 1 so far with the ground out to second. Takes a first pitch strike. <laughs> Off the plate. Kalf 0 for 4 yesterday. 1 for 2 on Friday. Supporting that 346 batting average. Yeah, we talked in the pregame a little bit about Calf's day yesterday. And of course, she came up with runners on base. You'd love to see her be able to convert that to a base hit that scores runs and RBI. But, you know, it's hard when you have, one, a target on your back because you're scouted with preseason selections. So other teams, well, you're a, a considered a, a senior at this point. But, of course, one of those years was COVID. So if she decides to come back, she's eligible to do so. People have four years of film on you. Yeah. There's another ball sharply hit to Moore. And she gobbles it up as usual. So three up, three down for the Jackets. Nothing doing. Five nothing Tigers. I'm not opposed to Sunday afternoon naps. Hey, I mean, the Tigers are up five nothing, so might as well. Pop might as in well, the yeah. Yeah. Pop in the passy and hit yourself a little cat nap. Yeah. Don't mind it at all. You you totally missed my cat nap, Tigers. You missed oh, that. You dropped I that. I did. Fired. The, Fired. I asked my daughters about the Picasso. Picasso. Reference. Yeah. They didn't know what you. They didn't know it either. Well, we're gonna have to talk. So to them. you're in the. You're in the. You're I'm in the, the doghouse. Well, no, no. You're in the older uh, viewers of TikTok. Oh that, man! Yeah, you just my, call me old. My teenagers. That's tough. You don't. You don't want to be the oldest person on TikTok, Sam. Yeah. I'm just you saying. Know. First pitch, up and in. To Mecklish, she stands in. Five nothing. The Tigers. More home runs again today. Another pitch up. 2-0. and oh. I guess it's fair to call me old since I've officially passed the age where I've no longer played against any of these players. That's fair. Aww. That's fair. Generationally, I'm, 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 I'm washed up. I'm good with it, though. I, yeah. like, I like this side of the 
the fence. It's not bad. No, it's not a bad There's kick a at all. There's a strike. Let sleeping babies lie, that's what I say. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> Two one count. Ooh, comes in, almost clips Meklesh. So good. Three and one to the Tigers' eight hole hitter. Davenport and then Mackenzie Clark scheduled. And ball four. Yep, those, I mean, the great at bat from Miklish. Third baseman, number you know, three, with a 3 1 Reed count. Davenport. Especially the last at bat struck out, you mm -hmm. expect that she wants to. Use this as an opportunity, put something in play, but admire the discipline, not chasing after anything. And unfortunately for Dennis, that's the free passes and and then a huge steal threat on first base. Reedy Davenport takes a strike. Walked back in the second inning. Here's the 0-1. Nobody out in the inning. Good pitch, 0-2. Yeah, super nice pitch. You can tell Davenport wasn't super expecting that location to stay where it was. And Dennis mixes that curb screw on that inner half of the plate, so it can get into the heads of hitters. Hard to anticipate whether or not that ball is going to break in my on my hands or curve back in over the strike zone. And runner goes down to second. It's going to bounce up and get past Saleo, but backed up by Edgman. It's another stolen base for Clemson as Meklish will be at second base. Yeah, I mean, Meklish, that speed and that jump. I mean, the the and this ball, she might have had a shot on it in a perfect bang, bang, mm -hmm. perfect tag throw situation, but... She makes it really hard because she gets that good jump and she's got that speed. Sharply fouled off by Davenport. Transferred from Florida Gulf Coast University where in 2019 she was the A-Sun Freshman of the Year, made the All-Freshman Team in 2021, Defensive Player of the Year and A-Sun First Team. And last year she was a preseason Defensive Player of the Year. Dennis responding with a strong at bat against Davenport. And that ball's fouled off. So you've watched the evolution of this at bat, right? Davenport takes that strike on the inner part of the plate that she thinks is going to be in on the hands. And then gets another inside pitch that she fouls off practically behind her because of how far in front she is. She's trying to protect that inner half of the plate, but way out in front. Now she's gotten her timing. I like the aggressiveness of this, this at bat, this approach. It's clear she's not comfortable at that location, mm -hmm. just in this particular at bat. Maybe that's not true all the time, but. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Mm, Try to get her to chase just too far off. Yeah. Good eye there by Davenport. That's one where you one, two balls off the plate, great with two strikes because that means that hopefully that's not something that she can take out, but mm -hmm. you can get her to chase it. But three, four balls off the plate, that's probably not going to fool her in this situation. Here's 3-2. Sharply fouled off again. And you see that same location, right? And you see how she's way out in front, kind of putting a defensive swing on it. Hughes comes over and Cheers on Dennis. 3-2, nobody out, runner at second. After the walk to Meklish, and she stole the next bag. Here's the pitch. She's battling. Battling Davenport, a heck of an at-bat. Right, just trying to waste anything that's around the edges of the zone and just can continue to get to the next pitch, get to the next pitch. With each one, she's getting a little bit more on time.
He'll do it again. That one's going to be in play. Saleo looks the runner back, fires on the first base. This is a great at bat for Dennis and a great response to a leadoff walk issued. She hammered that inside corner, hammered that inside corner, made Davenport second guess her timing and then goes to the outer half of the plate. And so by this time, she's completely rolling over the ball. So that's mm. exactly what you want to do when you try to jam up the hands and then work away. So here's Mackenzie Clark, Clemson's leadoff hitter. First pitch to her is fouled off. So one out in the inning, 0-1 count to Clark with the runner in scoring position. Timeout called. Dennis trying to put <laughs> her very best against Clark. I think she fouled that off. Did she foul it off or just hit off of Kauf? I think it hit off of Kauf. Yeah, it should be one Didn't, and a, one, and one yeah. rather. Although it looks like that might have topped her, topped her bat. They do have 0-2 on the board. And 0-2 on the hands of the umpire. Well, there you go. It's going to foul that off. Staying alive. I almost started singing there. <laughs> we won't we won't turn this into karaoke, although. Although. Although we could. It's not off the table just yet. Here's the O2 to Clark. Barely stays alive. Yeah, and this is a good off speed pitch. Clark does a nice job. To just slow down her swing and slow down her barrel enough to keep her bat in the zone longer, in the area of the plate longer, so that she can just tip it. O2 once again, and then you're going to get Clark on that outside pitch. Same pitch she struck out in the first inning. So scouting report is go outside on Clark with two strikes. Yeah, and this is a fantastic job. Great location from Dennis. Going to that curve. See it just continue to break out. And really giving Clark a, tarf, a tough time this weekend as the Jackets bullpen. First strike out for Chandler Dennis. And here's Moore. 308 on the season. We'll bat with runner at second. Two outs now. Moore doubled and came home to score. I tell you, Dennis has done a good job of getting ahead of hitters here. And you can kind of feel the difference as she's pitching to each batter. Yeah, and, and you, you notice I'm probably talking a little bit more intentionally about the pitches thrown in the at-bats since she's come in the game because these are smarter pitches. Mm. They're located well, so it's worth noticing when you face a team as good as Clemson, noticing what she's doing in order to be successful because it's really fascinating to watch. There's another pitch swung on and missed. So ahead of Moore, one and two. And got her to chase. Second strikeout in the inning. And that'll do it for the Tigers. So Dennis able to hold him right there. We still have a 5-0 score. Clemson has a 5-0 score on Georgia Tech, trying to sweep the series against the Jackets here this season. And turned into a pretty nice day. The sun's out. A lot of ballers watching this one. Number five team in the nation and Valerie Cagle doing their thing. 
the Jackets trying to hold him right there and keep this one competitive. Well, that guy's Man, not that's really a, watching. That's a heck of a nap. I think I have one of those on the books for later. Yeah? If I'm lucky. Love to see all the, the young up-and-coming softball players out at the park today. Mallory Black sees the first pitch and lifts it out to right. Put away by Jacobson for out number one. And a nice pitch from Jacobson. Excuse me, Kegel. <laughs> Speaking of naps. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you go ahead and start now? <laughs> one out, and here comes Conley. She was hacking at the first pitch, swinging a miss. What's cool about these two teams in particular is that you cover most of Georgia and South Carolina mm -hmm. in interest and creating, you know, an example of what a hardworking, successful female athlete looks like. Both of these teams go to very academically driven schools as well, so... They're going to go on into their lives and be super successful in careers. That same D1 podcast I mentioned earlier, Coach Eileen Morales always talks very highly of their her players to say they're going to go on into careers and make a lot more money than her. Those are her words. Yeah. And she's proud of that because she gets to be a part of that development. So when you see these up-and-coming softball players in the crowd, you you smile because now they have representation. They know what hardworking and successful student athletes and and really strong young women look like. Crown ball, going to be foul. I can tell you how impressed I am with you because I have two daughters. Oh, stop. And, you know, I got a chance. We talked, you know, you came on the broadcast with me several years ago. Yep. And come a long way. You, you have, but you, you were just a, <laughs> you are great well-rounded as the ball's grounded to Davenport over the first. Well-rounded, well-spoken, um, kind-hearted person. And, uh, you know, Well, I'm you're sure sweet. Businesswoman by day, yes. sports broadcaster by night. Well, I was going to say, and then the professional side of you is your, your business. You're all business. Oh, you're, yeah. You know? And so that's very impressive. No nonsense. I have so. several of my teammates came through the business school here at Tech, and we'll give you a run for our money. On, on a Zoom call, I can tell you yeah, that sure. much. First pitch strike to Allen. And that's what I would desire for my daughters. Is yeah. They're, they're 17 and 15. One's going to be off to college in the fall. I can't believe it. I, I would be terrified to get on a Zoom call with Valerie Cagle when she goes <laughs> on to her bright and beautiful career that she's going to have in the future. I'm sure that same quiet confidence we talked about that makes her so successful in the circle and in the box Imagine her introducing herself on a Zoom call as the CEO one day of a company. Right. She's gonna be, she's gonna be tough. Change of speeds, and they're high. Yeah, she's gonna be a health studies, a health science major, with a con concentration of professional health studies, which. Her walk in the room and go, yeah, here's how you do it. And that's, <laughs> you know, I'm the science. Obvi obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all you need to know. Swing and a miss. Well, the mental dexterity that it takes to be such a successful and focused pitcher, she goes through complete games like it's her job. I mean, it is right. her job, but she makes it look so easy. And then to come up in the box, those are two very different hats that you wear. Here's ball four to Allen. Fair to be conservative to Allen. If you're going to be conservative to anybody in this lineup, Allen drove one out to left center field over that scoreboard. And you're going to have a pinch runner check in for Allen, likely, as Eileen Morales talks to Steve Wayner. And it'll be Vukadinovic, the freshman. A player you can see, she got some good starts in the non-conference. Yeah. But you can see this young lady developing into yep. a very good 
softball player. Just working on her pitch selection and consistency game to game. I think she'll definitely be your everyday starter in, in years to come. Dobbins first pitch grounded Davenport gloves it and on to first and that'll do it for the Jackets. So no runs, no hits, no errors, one walk. We head to the fifth, five nothing. There's not much better place to watch softball than Mewburn Field here on the campus of Georgia Tech. Sam Paranunzi got a chance to play here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's just a beautiful afternoon turned into. Still some clouds in the sky, a little overcast, but turned into a beautiful afternoon. Clemson continues to do what they're doing. As two home runs on the afternoon and a 5-0 score over the Jackets. Chandler Dennis. Continues in the circle, facing Valerie Cagle leading off. The CEO herself, Valerie Cagle, stands yep. in. We'll call her the CEO of the CEO the nickname. of ACC softball. I feel like She's, that's I feel like that's fair. I mean, gosh, what? Well, I mean, what other title do you give her? I want to know what she doesn't do well. Ooh, and that one comes in and clips her. So, second batter hit by a pitch by Dennis. Yep, and that's her second time reaching base as a result of a free pass today. She walked back in the first. Ooh. Just got a little sliver of the stripe down the side of her pants. And pinch runner Houston will check in. Ansley Houston, junior out of Grantville, Georgia, Noonan High School. Noonan High School. Well. I'm sure she's got some friends and family in the crowd. Although it's not like, you know, Clemson's that far from here, but still saves you some of the, some commute. Here's Jacobson. Bats with a runner on and nobody out. Going to lift it up to left field. Saleo actually tried to call off Dobbins. I think <laughs> the right play was made by Dobbins. Just to yeah, yeah. No, and especially because then she's also in position to – make a throw if there's a base running error over to one. I just like how quickly Saleo peeled out of there <laughs> and really turned on the Jets yeah. to get out of the way. It's probably the fastest I've seen her run was just to move. So one out, here's Logaleo. Three run home run back in the third. Comes inside and Houston's gonna steal second. Good pitch to steal on. So interesting. They're going to. So Eileen Morales is. Fired up. Yeah. Because she's, she's saying not only. I don't believe that this. I don't believe that she thinks it was a hit by pitch. And she's also fired up about the fact that she falsely walked down to first and blocked the throw down to try to get the steal. Yeah. I, you know what? I didn't see. I didn't the see hit, the hit by pitch. The hit by pitch either. So. so I thought she was just hanging out in front of the plate. And when you're out of the box, especially if you're standing, so watch how she steps onto the field. Now she's in play. Um, and the umpire does not call hit by pitch. Yeah, so we're going to review this. All right, so this is going to be tricky because of, and Coach Morales is. Too bad they don't have the dogs producing the game today. You would have uh, had a service dog in yeah. training yeah. making this call, but uh, they'll have a professional umpire instead, <laughs> so that's probably better. Uh, so the challenge is, what do you look for to say it was a hit by, uh, the batter was hit? Change of rotation of the ball, probably. Maybe the jersey flipping, flipping up, but it's a really tough challenge, I think, to win if you're Georgia Tech. But if you win it, you've got multiple layers here of now what do you do because the batter did step into the into the path of the catcher. Right. So has to be indisputable evidence. And I'm glad, you know, yeah, could have taken her. was glad yeah. she taken her to the house. She would have been yeah. 
in a world of hurt if Calvin been hit, let go of this ball. You could have been hit both sides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if it's the jersey or the back arm. Well, and I, the thing that I'm not sure about in this situation is what – I don't know that they're necessarily disputing the hit-by-pitch. In fact, I don't think they are. I don't know if you can use the instant replay to dispute yeah, whether or not okay. a player is hit by a pitch. I think they're disputing the yeah. after, like what happens in this situation. And and well, well, the runner goes down to first anyway, if it's hit, a second anyway, if it's hit by a pitch. Right, so, so it doesn't matter. I don't know if that matters. But We're just speculating up here. We yeah. have no, we have no idea. We'd be better, be better off having dogs in the broadcast <laughs> booth at this point. So here is, Ooh. oh, yeah. Okay, you can clearly see her elbow does get hit just below her, uh, just above the elbow. Can you, though? I, I mean, I don't clearly, cl probably not clear a great yeah. adjective. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, they're, they're reviewing the hit by pitch. I love to watch Coach Morales in these situations because she just gets real fired up. But you can tell she's trying to be professional about it. And she is, for the most part. So let's see what the call is coming. It's the walk. Oh, hit. Hit by pitch. She gets to go she down to first. She gets to go to first. Call upheld. Well, folks, if, if you're confused, that's uh, okay. I think that that's fair because I think it's safe to say that I'm confused. I don't know if Nathan is, but now we have clarity that it was a hit by pitch. Yeah. They did have a really good look by this crew. Yeah. Talk about the crew. Yeah. Just phenomenal. Here it is. This is the deciding image. You kind of see her, her arm get, yep, get kind of pushed up. Doink. Doink. That was actual sound. <laughs> <laughs> so runners at first and second, one out. Logaleo at first. Houston at second, and Vieira fouls off the pitch. What it does as well is it breaks up some momentum, too. That was, that was a hot minute, maybe yeah. minute and a half that you guys listened to us ramble on, having no idea what was going on. So you know the players are down there like, all right, can we, can we get this going a little bit? When you're in the outfield and they have a long re replay like that, or you just kind of start thinking about, eh, what am I going to do? What, what, what I have homework yeah, what to do? Gonna, what are you going to eat for dinner later yeah. kind of a thing? No. I mean, one, you're fired up either way, right? Because no matter what side you're on, you feel very strongly that the call <laughs> goes in favor of your yeah, team. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> so you're fired up in that direction. And then you're also thinking about who's up next, what you have to be thinking about in either of the situations. That ball is going to be lifted towards left and going to go off the wall. Dobbins plays it on one hop, fires it in, cut off by Saleo, and another run scores for the Tigers, making it 6 nothing. Good hit by Vieira. Great hit by Vieira. Looking for a good pitch to drive opposite field. And that's, that's part of this, right? If she comes up with... Runners on first and second. She wants to take something to the to the grass so that she can score the runner from second base. So you're kind of going through these situations in her head, and she executes really well. Double by Vieira. Here is Oda. Still just one out in the inning. Runners at second and third. Almost hit another one. So we've we've not to harp on it enough, but unforced looks like Coach McDaniel may come out to talk to Dennis. And you may have a pitching change. It looks like uh, Coach McDaniel's asked the umpire to go to his book. But uh, lead off walks, hit by pitches, mm -hmm. unforced errors or, or just you know not making Clemson earn correct base runners I mean here we go another runner comes home to score it was a hit by pitch to start the inning six free passes yep three of those are hit by pitches 
um, two of those three passes come in, in a leadoff situation. Luckily, last inning, uh, you're able to work off. Voiles was mm -hmm. able to work off without any damage done. Or No, excuse me, that was Dennis. But to your point, Nathan, it's you can't defend free passes and you can't defend home runs. So. Well, it was Oda that was walked in the fifth inning of Friday night's game, and that was the run rule run that came home and changed the aspect of the game because put the eighth run up. So you just got to keep those runners off the base pass if you do the jackets. I think you, if you throw strikes and keep those leadoff runners off, really increases your chance of yeah. getting out of an inning and there learning are, damage. There are a lot of runs in this series that the Jackets have given up that if you don't have that free pass issued, that run isn't there. Mm -hmm. And and when you're kind of breaking season records, so to speak, by scoring four runs against Clemson, you're doing that, something that no other team has done. Right. The, that's the difference is that if you put up a four spot on Clemson, you're within striking zone if those those free passes aren't there cushioning their lead. Yep. And that's that that's something that you you that hurts when you walk away from this. Two balls, two strikes to Oda. Not gonna get the call there, runs it full, three two. Fouled off. It's a good pitch. Yep. Good, good location. Good pitch. Great at bat from Oda. To waste that pitch, that would have been hard to work with. Get to something that she can do something with. Because in this situation, the the Tigers are getting close to run rule territory. And, and Oda's job is to score a run. You have less than two outs. So you need something that you can lift to the outfield for a sack fly or get to the grass. And lost her just too far outside. Not going to give a chase for Oda. And a walk will bring up Mecklish. She struck out and walked herself back in the fourth. Dennis checks the band and will deliver. There's a strike. Yep, the, the Jackets defense has handled Micklish a lot like that of a, a power slapper, triple threat. So you have a little bit of a shift in the outfield. Center field Edgeman is favoring that opposite field gap. And the infield is prepared to go four. Popped up, it's gonna get out of play. And the kids go <laughs> screaming away. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. Coach made a good effort at it. Trying to protect his players. Yep, so infield pinched in a bit because bases loaded one out, so they're they're going four. Try to get the force at home. Off the plate. One and two. Two double plays in Friday's game mm -hmm. for the Jackets. Which was to, huge. To end innings. Here's the one-two pitch. Too far off the plate. Two-two. So, again, if you're Miklish, you're looking for something that you can... Lift out to the outfield to try to get a sacrifice fly. Logaleo can run well. There's a ball lifted to left. Dobbins underneath it. Throw home is a good one. And now a runner at second almost got caught up. But there are two outs in the inning. Yeah, played super well from Dobbins. Does a good job of staying back. 
not overrunning the ball in. So that way, when she's catching it, she's catching it out in front of her body. It would carry her momentum through to generate power for her throw to home. It's exactly how you need to play it in order to try to throw out the runner that's tagging. Kind of surprised Kalf didn't throw it down to Trudeau. Yeah, me too. Of course, they didn't want to throw it in the center yeah. field and get that run <laughs> home because you flirting with run rule here. Right, and her throws haven't been quite as accurate as they typically are. So Here's Reedy Davenport, 0 for 1 on the afternoon, walk in a ground out. Nine-hole hitter. Bases still loaded. Two outs. Here's Dennis's pitch. Good inside pitch. Not going to get the call, however. That one on the other side. 3-0, oh, nowhere to put her. Now, Coach Nathan, do you give her the green light with 3-0, and oh, two outs? 6 nothing, bases loaded, <laughs> nine-hole hitter? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And called strike. I would have given her the green light for sure, but I agree with that take. I, that's... I think she probably wants something just a little bit sure. lower than that. See what Dennis has in store. 3 1. There's ball four. And walking a run home is not only a bad idea, but you also flip the order. Yep. And I can tell you if there's any player in this lineup that is. I mean, absolutely itching for a hit right now. It is Mackenzie Clark. Has been relatively quiet all weekend. Has she one was, hit. Yep, 0 for 3 yesterday and 1 for 4 Friday. So, do you, as a hitter, did you feel the anxiety of... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Especially because you, she's gotten up in several situations where there's runners on base. Mm -hmm. So, you not only feel the pressure of not being, not getting hits, not being successful against pitchers that maybe you could be successful, your teammates are finding success, but you're also not being productive for your team. Yeah. Because while hitting can be very individual, and so you carry expectations for yourself to, you know, put up the stats and, and beat pitchers and be successful, You all, it's also a team sport. So you have to pass it back to your teammate. You have to score runs. You have to do a job. Follow behind, two and one. The good news for Clark in this situation is Dennis is having a tough inning and issuing a lot of free passes. And in this case, that is an RBI that puts your teammate in, or put your team in, in run rule territory. Mm -hmm. So that's a job done as well. Swing and a miss. Boy, Clark has, that outside pitch has really gotten her. Yeah, she looks like she's having a hard time Seeing that one. So two balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. You're one run away from a run rule opportunity. That ball's popped in the air and going to get out of the field. Yep, bounces off the light post. Hughes. So they'll and do it again. And it looks like... Uh, Allen. Yep, Vukadinovic is yep. in right. Thank you. Yep. From when she was a pinch hitter out there. So she got some speed out in right field. Got to get the pitch right here, though. 2-2. Two -two. And it's going to be sent towards the gap. Two runs will score easily. Clark finally gets that hit. It's a two-run double. Man. Nine, nothing score. The weight of the world is off Mackenzie Clark's shoulders. You know that's a big sigh of relief. A big two RBI. 
swing, double to the wall. That feels good. That's the outside pitch that she's been struggling yeah. so much with this weekend. <laughs> and that's exactly it, right? Like, she's the kind of player that's not going to formally slump. You're never yeah. going to see her struggle for multiple weekends, multiple outings, but, um, you know, and that's because she's able to to make an adjustment, and she did, and she did in a very timely fashion. Moore will bat the ninth batter to hit, and she's going to send it towards left field and going to get over the head of Dobbins. Two runs will score, and it's a base-clearing double for Moore. That's her second double of the afternoon. Back-to-back -back doubles. Yeah, have a day, have a weekend, even. Yeah. And you see inside Moore and just locates this in, strides perfectly, has her timing perfectly, and Dobbins tries to get a glove on it, has a pretty good jump, but just can't quite get to it. That's going to run Chandler Dennis out of this game. It's 11 nothing Clemson. You're going to have a new jacket pitcher coming up here in the top of the fifth. And it will be Jaden Studebaker. We'll tell you about her when we return. Jack, uh, jackets trailing 11 nothing. Jaden Studebaker checks in, the freshman from Superior, Colorado, making her first appearance in a collegiate softball game. We've seen her warm up several times. Going to be interesting to see her come in. She's was a two-year captain and four-year letter winner at her high school team. Mother played softball at San Diego State from 92 to 96. So you know she's well coached up and ready for this opportunity. Yeah, and you know the beautiful thing about being down 11 nothing and getting your first career start is there are no expectations. There is no pressure. Now you are facing Miss CEO, Miss <laughs> ACC softball herself. Yeah. But in order to climb the ladder, you, sometimes you have to face the right. big boss in your first <laughs> first ever <laughs> time ever in the circle. Time playing college softball officially in a game. Yeah. Kegel 0 for 1 with a strikeout from Studebaker. One ball, one strike. And here's the deal, too. I mean, you're not going to get recruited to a Power 5 D1 school if you're not a Power 5 D1 caliber pitcher. So she's got it in her. What's her heart doing right now? <laughs> I would say it's beating really fast, but it's probably not beating at all. You're just like... <laughs> I'll never forget my first at bat. My legs were shaking so bad. Oh, are you it serious? was in the fall, so it was all very yeah. everything was still very new, but my legs were shaking so bad I couldn't even pick my my foot up to stride. Two balls, one strike. And that ball's lifted deep and out of here. That was a long ball. Launched. Yeah. Absolutely launched. I don't even think it came out of orbit. Kegel sends this one. Welcome to D1 Yard. softball. Welcome to D1 softball. Hey, you got it over with. Uh, maybe not ready for the big boss yet, but she can make Who an is? adjust. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> no one. Please. No one else in, in, in NCAA softball is either, if it makes you feel any better. So Jacobson will stand in. Man. I wonder that, if Kegel... I mean, that kind of... Yeah. That'll, that'll leave you speechless. Yeah. That. I wonder if she if she knew this was the first time Studebaker was pitching, if she felt bad even a little bit. No. no. If anything, it's kind of like, come on in. Yeah. Um, no, but you you have this the stats, and you have your homework paperwork that's right down there in the dugout. So when you go to the scouting report and see, okay, what does she throw? You don't know. That one's we high. Don't, we don't know because we don't have any film on her. So one ball. She did come back and have a first pitch strike to Jacobson. Thirteen nothing. That one's coming in high. Yep. Goes to the off speed. She'll want to bring that one down in the zone a little bit, but it's got an, a nice enough change of speeds that it can throw off the timing of hitters. 
Here's a 2 1. Getting away from her just a bit. Jacobson had a two run home run back in the first. Take him up to 10. Is this 10 home runs? Was that the third of the, the mm -hmm. yeah, 10 home runs this weekend? Yep. We can't even keep up with them. That's how many there are. Well, we knew Virginia Tech had nine. Yep. And we were impressed by that. Yep. Ten. Double digits. And you're. You just have yourself a weekend. Yeah. Have it all. Have this, all, every this, bit of it. This is a good Georgia Tech softball program. This is just a better Clemson this is program right now. This an amazing Clemson yeah. program. Yeah. yeah. An Oklahoma City caliber Clemson program, no doubt. Three balls, two strikes. Studebaker delivers. Sharply hit up the line. Jacobson looks two, slides in safely. Jacobson does an amazing job as she has all weekend, gets her timing. She's out in front of this one, notice how far out in front, so she's wrapping her bat around, but able to keep it fair, right? And that means that she, she got her timing enough to get the job done. She'll stand up on second base. Morgan Johnson is gonna be a pinch hitter out of Evans, Georgia. And you've got Number nine, Sarah, Howell. Sarah Howell coming in to run at second. So this is Johnson's 11th at bat so far this season. Yeah, Johnson's had some big at bats. She's, I think she had a couple walk-offs last year. Mm -hmm. Takes a strike. I tell you, I like Studebaker's confidence and yep. steadiness in the circle. I like that she'll go to that changeup for a first pitch strike. That's big time. And I beg your pardon. It was Johnson missed 2022 with an injury. It was 2021. She, yep, yep, she did appear in 2021. A good bit. Here's the 0-2. Fouled off. Nice job from Studebaker to go right at Johnson. Nice job from Johnson fouling that one off to get to the next one. Try to see a couple more pitches in this at bat. That would be her goal. Pitch is going to bounce up there. Runner to third. Kauf didn't have a great look at it because Johnson in the batter's box. And the runner lost her footing a little bit. Thought she might even fall. But athletic enough to regain her balance and still get in safely. Here's the one two. Too high. Two balls, two strikes. Nice job from Johnson battling back from 0 and 2. Stands six foot one. Oh, change up and set her down. First career strikeout for Studebaker ends the inning, but not before another big inning for Clemson. They put an eight spot up and lead 13 nothing. Throw goes down to second. Valerie Cagle back in the circle for Clemson. 13 0 lead. Hey, that young man's awake. He didn't want to miss the end of this one. 13 0 after eight runs scored in the top of the fifth for Clemson. It'll be Hughes, Mingany, and Saleo scheduled to hit.
I'm still thinking sees. about that Valerie Cagle home run from uh, top of top of five. That's what woke him up. That's what That's woke, woke him up. Kid. Hey, come on back into this game. Yeah. You need to see this. Yeah. So here's Hughes. First pitch swinging. 0-1. What a performance this weekend, not just for Cagle, but this entire Clemson softball team. Is it? Is it? Un. I don't want to say un, unfair, but just to say, as a coach, go. This is what we want to be. What you should, what you're playing against right now is where we need to be. Yeah. And how to get? And here's how we get there. No, I mean, the here's how we get there. Because yeah. every coach can say, this is what we're right. going to do. But part of what makes this sport incredible is that you have 18 to 22-year-olds who are, you know, athletic. Mm -hmm. Best in the country. Best in the country, for all intents and purposes, like athletic specimen for what they're capable of. And you have to be able to put together the right training and systems and coaching. And that's where the coaches come in. Right. Um, to, to help them get there, to show them how to get there. Chopped foul. Um, you know, and, and you got to also be able to tip your cap and give credit where credit is due. Clemson has played a heck of a weekend. So you got to be able to walk away from this and take information, the good and the bad, and build on that. Swing and a miss. Down goes Hughes. But I also think it's safe to say that Valerie Cagle will earn ACC honors. Hi. She might be both the pitcher and the offensive of the player week. of the week. Yeah. I mean, she might as well. Third strikeout for Cagle. Here's Mingini. She's going to take a pitch. Ball one. Grounded to third back in the second. Looking for her first hit of the season. Off speed. It's yeah, 63. That, that looked that like up, a little. Yeah. That rise ball. They, they, as they say, it is an off speed. Which is, I mean, it's kind of the same in nature as a curve ball. You can throw a curve as an off speed. Chopper, Kegel. Out number two. And she, and she plays her position. <laughs> what doesn't she do? Right. We need to know. I bet she stinks at Mario Kart. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, <laughs> I bet she's. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably not. She's probably like ranked in Nintendo or something like that. Here's Look Saleo, and it's going to be a pinch, yep, pinch hitter as Caroline Davis will stand in. Davis, the senior, get a chance to face Cagle here out of Houston, Georgia, in Jackson County Comprehensive High School. Takes the first pitch inside. Ball one. Davis swings and misses. Davis looking for her first hit of the season. Nice take there. That's a tough pitch to be able to decide whether or not it's going to stay at that bottom part of the zone. Two balls, one strike. Davis did pick up her first hit of the season back in 2021 against Clemson. She would have hmm. likely faced Cagle. Two balls, two strikes. I love that the marketing team is playing Survivor from Destiny's Child to try to encourage. And strike three called. Four strikeouts on the day for Cagle. And Clemson has swept Georgia Tech. It's a run rule game, 13-0, and just it is what it is. It this is, is a you gotta fantastic team. you got to absolutely tip your cap to an all-out performance, pitching, hitting, defense. 
There's a reason this team is so well noted. They're going to go deep into postseason. They're going to compete for a national title. I have no doubt in my mind. Valerie Cagle is going to get ACC honors, or at least she should, for both offensive and pitching performance. Um, so if you're the Yellow Jackets, you got to tip your cap, walk away, thinking about the great things that you did, recognizing the opportunities to improve so that you can compete in the middle of the ACC. And for Clemson, I mean, you just roll right on into the next yep. one and keep it going. She won hit the Jackets on Friday. She won hits them again. 13 runs for Clemson. Nine hits, no errors. The Jackets are shut out. And Clemson sweeps the series for the entire Georgia Tech crew. I'm Nathan Curry for Sam Perinunzi. We say so long. See you next time on ACC Network.